In this video, I'm going to show you how I've gotten over 1,000 streams in the first four days of my brand new band's debut release using Facebook ads. And one really cool stat about this release is that I've averaged an 18 cents conversion cost, which if you've ever done Facebook ads before, you'll know that's actually fantastic, especially nowadays. That would have been fantastic a year ago, but nowadays it's even more fantastic. So I'm going to walk you through the entire Facebook ad campaign, all of the Spotify data, the, the landing page data in this video. Um, first, I want to go over some statistics and then we'll start diving into the nitty gritty where I can show you how I actually did it. So this is an Excel spreadsheet I made to go over the data. So first, let's look at the Facebook ads. So I have two campaigns, did things a little bit differently this time. I have a tier one country campaign. Let me make my screen a little bit bigger. A tier one country campaign and a tier two country campaign. So tier one's costing, actually, let me change my date range to maximum. Day, uh, tier one, 61 cents per conversion, which is expensive, but tier one countries. So those are always more expensive. And then 20 cents in tier two, which is quite good. That's exactly where I want it to be. And so there's a common thing nowadays, ever since iOS 14 and Facebook ads, where you're gonna be missing a lot of conversions on Facebook. So despite these costs being what they are, they're actually better. And the way you figure that out is I'm using Feature FM as my landing page here. So I was able to look at how many actual clicks that I've gotten. So since the song came out, there's been 765 clicks to services. That's essentially a conversion. If I go over to Facebook ads, you can see that there's only like 520, 530, something like that. So there's a big discrepancy there. There's like 230 or so people missing. And so that's why I need to take things to a spreadsheet so I can figure out the actual conversion cost. So I'll save you the nitty gritty, but basically what I did is um, there's, I just wrote down the number of conversions in tier one, tier two. Some of these numbers might be different in Facebook ads because I did this 15 minutes ago. So numbers are always coming in. Um, you know, the number of conversions in each of these, the total, the number of feature FM. I did some quick division to get the, um, the ratio. So basically Facebook's missing 31% of all my conversions. Then I can put the amount I spent, write down the cost per conversion in tier one, tier two, multiply those by 0.69, and I can get the actual cost per conversion of tier one and tier two. Now, for all you data nerds out there, you probably said, well, this isn't actually accurate. If you really wanted to find out the true cost for tier one and the true cost for tier two, you'd want to go down to the uh, country list. I forget where it is on here, but and add up all the different countries and figure that out. I didn't feel like doing that. This is close enough for my needs. <laughs> so tier two is actually roughly 14 cents per conversion. Tier one is actually roughly 42 cents per conversion. One of them might be better or worse, but when you average them out, it's this. When you average the two together, you get 18 cents per conversion. So that's how I did that math. All right, so if we look at the song on Spotify, we have 1,122 streams. I'm going to make my screen a little smaller here. Um, but this is a live counter. We only want the streams that are coming as of yesterday so that we can see all the listener and save stats and also the playlist edition stats, which also means in their spreadsheet, we want to get the amount of budget spent, not including Monday and Tuesday, because the Spotify stats are only accurate or only updated up to actually Saturday. So essentially these stats are only active or updated up to Saturday. So on our Facebook campaign, we want to only grab the amount of money that we spent. Uh, including Friday and Saturday, so that we can figure out all of these cost per metrics right here. So I could I could just write down all the metrics from Spotify for Artist on this page and figure out the cost per stream, cost per listener, cost per save, cost per playlist edition, cost per follower. I'll make my screen a little bit bigger here so you can see those a little bit better. And these are actually on par with numbers I was getting like two years ago, which is pretty sweet. Some of them are better, some of them are worse. In particular, the cost per stream and cost per listener numbers tend to get better and better over the duration of a campaign as people repeat listen, as you get on algorithmic playlists, as people add you to their own playlist and they have friends that check them out, stuff like that. Um, then we can do some quick math and check out the save rate, 81%, which is like phenomenal. The stream rate, people are listening to the song an average of 2.15 times, which is good for a song that's only four days old. And for the data as being only essentially two days. Uh, the playlist edition rate, 23.3%, and the overall engagement rate, that's essentially the combination of these two numbers, is 104%. So on average, each person either is saving or playlisting the song, and in particular, on average, a lot of people do both. So that's why it's over 100%. 
um, which is fantastic. Everyone that hears the song is engaging with it, which, which is a very good metric. So and I want to point out something with the followers. So we have 81 followers as of now. So what I did is I said we started off with 17 because we did some pre-save stuff. So I just subtracted out 17. That's why there's 64 here. And that's essentially it for the whole profile. There's literally one song, and this is all we have. We're putting on another song in three and a half weeks, and we're going to do this again. So how did I actually run this campaign? So if you're familiar with this channel at all, you know that I've done a bunch of videos going over Facebook ads and Facebook conversion campaigns to get more people to stream your music. And I wish I had access to Apple Music for artists for this band, but Apple Music is just being really slow at getting into that. Um, so I can't see how people are engaging on, on Apple yet. Um, but if you know anything about my channel, I run campaigns like this all the time. So I want to walk you through what I did unique for this one. So there's two different campaigns, tier one and tier two. They're essentially identical. The only difference is I'm targeting different countries in each one. And when I run these campaigns, I'm sending people to a feature FM landing page. If you've seen me use Tone Den or hyped it in the past, this is the same kind of deal. Now I wanted to try something new with this where instead of just putting Spotify and Apple like I normally would, I just put almost everything. And then I also have an email subscription box at the top offering people to win a free t-shirt because that, that's what we're doing. Every song we drop, we're picking a winner from our email list and giving them a free t-shirt, which has led to a lot of email list signups, which is great because a free t-shirt costs us like 15, 20 bucks or something. So it's a good deal to give away a t-shirt. But I've been using Feature FM one, because they gave me a free account per year. By the way, they also gave me a, a affiliate slash discount link. If you lose the if you use the link and coupon code in my description, you get thirty percent off any annual plan. So you know if you're interested in Feature FM, there is a discount code down there slash discount slash affiliate code down there for you. But I've been really liking it. I think this might have helped the campaign a bit because Feature FM loads really fast. I did make a video on it for a ransom page speed test, so you can check it out for yourself. No pressure. Use what you're going to use. Just thought I mention the fact of using Feature FM. But even though I included all those extra services, most people are still going to Spotify. 77% are going to Spotify. Followed by YouTube, we had a lyric video, so we wanted to get something on it. And since it's only 13%, I'm happy with that. 6% Apple and a little bit of extra stuff thrown in the middle, but mostly Spotify. So let's dive into this actual campaign so I can walk you through how it was created. So I just clicked edit on the campaign. So here we have the campaign level. Now I have the brand new on this ad account because this ad account is brand new. I've only, it's only existed for like a month or something. And this is the first campaign of this type we've ever ran in this ad account. So we have the brand new simplified campaign creation tool. So we ran it as an engagement campaign. Um, which Facebook told me, I had, a, I had a call with them and they told me that if you wanna do something like what you're doing, use the engagement option and then select conversions. If you use leads or sales, your cost will probably be higher because it's gonna be looking for people likely to give you leads or sales. So that's why in this campaign, I'm using the engagement objective, not to be confused with the older <laughs> engagement objective. Then I turned on campaign budget optimization for $20 a day. And then I have two different ad sets here. So on the left, with my screen a little bigger, I have a bands ad set where I'm essentially targeting a bunch of different bands and then alternative metal where I'm targeting the genre, alternative metal. Inside of each of these ad sets, I have five different ads and I'm gonna show you uh, two of them in this video so you kind of know what I'm doing. Let me zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole screen. And let's go into the bands one because why not? So this is where with the new simplified campaign setup and I choose engagement. I have to choose website. I have to choose my custom conversion that I had to make with Feature FM. Um, and then we can scroll down and look at the locations. So this is all tier two countries that I have in here. Tier two countries are typically cheap, <clears throat> are typically cheaper, but they're typically, they're, they're safe. They actually end up streaming your music in Spotify. And I can confirm this by going into the data for the song. And you can see a lot of these countries showing up, you know, Mexico, Brazil, Russia. Um, I forget if, I think Spain might be in tier two, but then US and Germany and Canada and Switzerland and Netherlands and Finland, UK are tier one. And then some more tier twos and some more tier ones. So you, the, the general idea is that every country you're running ads to and spending money on should show up, should have streams show up on your Spotify. So if we go back to ads, 
I have all these countries in here. I'm choosing living in this location. And then I'm doing 18 to 45 for ages. And then if we go down a little bit more, I essentially just threw in a bunch of alternative metal bands. Actually, only three. I thought I did more. But Architects, Breaking Benjamin, Bring the Horizon. And then I narrowed it or I defined it further by Spotify. Just to try to increase the probability that they had Spotify because I was putting all these different destinations on the page. I wanted to make sure that Spotify would be prioritized in some way. Um, if you just have Spotify on your landing page, you don't really even need to add this because it's Facebook's algorithm will figure it out. But if you have all these different things in there, you definitely want to add it if you care about people going specifically to Spotify. Now scroll down a little bit more. These are the specific placements I'm running on. Essentially four main feed placements, three main story placements, Instagram Reels haven't had good results with myself and everything else off. <laughs> so now let's go into the actual ads. And so I'm gonna show you two ads. The one that's doing the best is this Chorus Beg ad. And this one is crushing it. Like, feel free to steal this ad idea. Um, I'm gonna show it to you right now on screen. I hope you enjoyed that. Basically what I did is I got the chorus of the song and I started off singing it normally and then I basically changed the lyrics but still singing the same melody to basically ask people to stream the song um, in a somewhat silly way, you know? So it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek silly video but I wanted to have it be a performance video too. And um, I think a lot of people don't realize when they're first seeing it that it's an ad and then all of a sudden I'm singing about, please go stream my song. And so people are like, oh snap, that's funny. And then they pay attention more and then they realize they like it and they go convert. At least that's my theory of why it's working. In terms of the text I use, and I'll zoom in a little bit, um, I wrote for fans of alternative metal slash modern hard rock, dot, dot, dot. And then um, if people click the little see more button here, they'll see this is our debut single headlock. We're releasing new songs every four to six weeks in 2022. This is one style of text that can work. I've, for myself and for many other people I've talked to, um, you can put lyric quotes in there, you can describe the story behind your song, but this is what I wanted to go with here because we have a very, very defined genre. Like when we launched this project, our goal was like, it's alternative metal. If you wanna call it hard rock, it's modern hard rock. <laughs> so um, it's very easy for, for me to define this project, whereas with my solo music, I have a harder time because I tend to be a little more all over the place. Um, I usually say it's poppy EDM, but it's less definable in like a subgenre where this is very easy to define. So that's why I called it out. Throw the listen now button on there. Throw in your, your feature FM or tone den or, or hyped it link in there. And then essentially I ran that. Now I have five different ads in here. I'm testing out verse two of the song and I'll zoom in again. Verse two, chorus one, verse one, last chorus, and then the chorus performance video that I already showed you. Um, I guess just to show you something completely different, here's the um, verse two lyric video video. So now if I go back into the ad sets for this campaign, you can see how the money's been divided, essentially equal. One's costing 21 cents per conversion, the other one 20 cents. Um, the alternative metal one is doing slightly better, I slightly more results. You can see that 90 plus percent of this budget is going to this course peg video. It, it's, it's essentially like, there is this one that costs 16 cents per conversion, but that's probably a fluke. I think in this one there's, no, no, this no one doesn't have it. But in, in this one, like that's not the cheapest one, but it only has three conversions. So, you know, this one is 174 and is 20 cents. And then so Facebook, I think, might like it more. I don't like I think they can tell if it's like a more organic performancey thing compared to like a more polished type video. And so they're serving it up more and it's getting consistently lower results than the other style videos, which are costing more and not getting as much love for Facebook. And you can see the exact same kind of split. 
in, in here. The other videos are more expensive, aside from some very niche cases with small numbers. And if I flip over into the tier one audience, you can see very similar splits across these. This alternative metal one is doing the best. If I go over to the cost per ads, uh, there's this, this one's getting two conversions for a penny. That's definitely like a fluke. Um, it, but everything's going behind this core is a big one. And that one is doing, you know, essentially the best aside from these, these outliers in the data that we see there. One particular feature of this campaign that I, I'm pretty proud of is the fact that we've gotten nine new email subscribers as a side effect of this campaign. So there's email collection nine. I did the count. I don't want to scroll down because I'll show everyone's emails. But, you know, to spend this amount of money, which is like, you know, not including today's date, it's like $110 and get nine new emails on top <laughs> of all of this data that we have, you know, over a thousand streams and, and 81 followers and all these saves listeners and playlist ads and like 30 Instagram followers and like 50 Facebook page followers. We got nine emails, which which is great. And so I think I'm on the side of, I think we should all start including like easy ways for people to sign up for a mailing list and throw it at the, like this is at the top of the page. It's not hurting the campaign at all. It's not reducing the amount of people that go to Spotify, but it's giving me email subscribers. We hired a company for like 150 bucks to make this lyric video and they made it in like a week, super happy with it. Um, but we haven't done any YouTube ads on this video. I wanted to see what would happen as a side effect of the Facebook ads. So zero promotion, barely even sharing the link to the YouTube channel. We've gotten 18 extra subscribers, 262 views in the videos, and four comments, some pretty good ones. Promising single, keep it up guys, I'll wait for the rest. Sounding killer, looking forward to more from guys. Awesome song, keep them coming. Nice music and a unique Instagram ad slash story, left a like, sub, and now also a comment. So people are leaving good comments. There's a good amount of views and subscribers happening on YouTube, all, you know, pseudo organically in a way, like 262 views. If I go back to Feature FM, only 102 clicks. So like half of these that occurred are people who are just shazamming the song and then searching it or just looking up every waking moment on YouTube and by the every waking moment <laughs> on YouTube and uh, searching up the band, which was really cool. And one, one awesome thing I thought about this study was that or this, this whole test is that a lot of people have said to me in the past, like, oh, Andrew, you've gotten these results, but you have 9,000 followers on Spotify. You have this YouTube channel. You already have this existing audience with all these streams coming in. You know, it's not really fair for you to say, this is how your campaign did, and this is what you should expect. This is a brand new band that was essentially promoted. It was 100% promoted through Facebook ads. Um, and you can go check our Facebook page, go check our Instagram account. We're getting a lot of really good engagement. And I'm not trying to brag. I'm just trying to show like, this is this is all the results of these these campaigns. Um, and I'm, I'm really just proud of it. So if you want to see how I got over 150 Instagram followers, 300 Facebook followers, 20 something pre-saves and over 100 email subscribers before the song even came out, check this video right here for the story behind that. And if you want to see a detailed course on how I make all these Facebook ad conversion campaigns, you can check out my course, Spotify Growth Machine, right here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.